Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. Now recently we did a video comparing really low velocity buckshot up to really high velocity and even excessively high velocity, 2000 FPS. And during filming that video we realized that the 2000 FPS uh, shell actually fared a lot better than we thought it would. So we made the decision to show you guys how we put that one together. It's a very simple assembly, and they're quite a bit of fun to have at the range. You guys have probably seen the video by now, but if not, well, the low velocity one patterned really well. The high velocity one, it spread out quite a bit. We expected the ultra high velocity one to spread out really wide, Probably have several misses of the nine pellets on paper, but we didn't. We had a pretty good pattern, just being honest. It was uh, quite surprising, to say the least. So, the components are a two and three quarter inch Shadat hull with a Shadat primer, of course. We are using Long Shot, my favorite powder, 50. We're using a Claybuster CB0118-12. If you don't have this, any Winchester WT12 wad replacement will work. We just like this one because, well, I have a lot of them, as does Josh. And, well, it was the first 12-gauge wad we ever got. Now, right away, some of you guys are thinking that's a tapered wad. Why are you putting it in a straight wall shell? Well, it's because it works. And to make it work... Needle nose pliers, pinch out the gas seal just to make it fit a straight wall shell, and we're done. See how it's flared out now? Much tighter seal. It'll work. Next, we need nine pellets of 30 cal number one. This is probably my favorite size, and nine pellets of it is going to weigh 0.825 ounces with the buffer, which is the final component. It's going to bring it up to a 0.87 ounce shell which is just below 7 8 of an ounce. And again, this is running right at 2,000 FPS. The one we chronoed was 1940. We have chronoed them out of the ultra slug, moving up to 2,095 FPS. The 835 has a 10 gauge bore. Some say you lose a little bit of velocity. Some say you gain. There's no real, even our own testing, we have not been able to confirm if you lose or gain. It's, uh, I guess, all dependent on what you're, uh, what you're using. And since we are going to roll this, we need some sort of an overshot card. I am using a three-quarter inch bingo chip. This one's blue. The color doesn't matter. I just prefer blue when using the white shells, and uh, you'll see why when we're done here. So, to get this started, we need that. Now, the wad that we flared the bottom out on on now I'll go ahead and just get that in there flared it out maybe a little bit too much but still see how it's a tight fit and ain't just falling in like it normally would and the stack height is right for a roll crimp if you want to fold this you probably have to move to a three inch shell or use the clay buster cb1138 which is basically this wad but a much shorter gas section or crush section which should allow for a fold crimp but I haven't tested that out also, if you're planning on folding this, I would back it down to 45 and work my way up. Fold crimps do produce a little bit higher velocities and pressures than rolls. So next, we need our nine pellets of number one. These are going to stack by threes in here. Awesome. And you can see, comes up right to the top of the wad, stack by threes. You can use eight pellets of 31 cal and stack those by twos, and that's also right at seven eighth ounces. I don't have any, but if you guys do, I would suggest using one here. Tear off one section of a 20 gauge nitro card and drop that in the bottom of the wad. As you can see, we are actually just a little bit below flush with the top of the wad, which is fine, but just for a little bit of extra support, since this is a really high velocity shell here, that 20 gauge uh, one section of a nitro card would probably prevent blowout of the shot cup. Although we have not had that happen to us, it can happen. Just letting you guys know. I'm using an ITX buffer here. It is my favorite. Right at 7 eighths of an ounce. Once you have the 
Top row of pellets, halfway covered with buffer. Just stick an overshot card on, and we're gonna roll it. I'll have to do it off camera. I'm not really set up to film roll crimps, but you can see why I like the blue overshot cards with the white hulls. It looks really cool. To roll this, I'm using the RN quad pin roll crimp tool. I actually like these better than the GAP being one, two, three, fours for just straight roll crimping. But if you need something that's gonna roll your shells plus finish your fold crimps, the BN series is the way to go. But if you're just straight rolling, roll crimping, this is the way to go. And here is the completed round. Notice the very nice roll on it. We do have a little bit of a taper, but not near as much as what a GAP can do. But that is a very fun round to shoot at the range. They're extremely loud. They actually kick decently hard. And they're easy to put together. And you can see right there, the blue and white just looks so cool together. Now as for a real world practical hunting load, I don't think this is what you're looking for at all. This is completely impractical in my opinion, but a lot of fun to shoot at the range. Usually when I put these together, I put them in a black Shadot haul with a red overshot card because red and black just looks menacing. And that's certainly what a shell like this is, menacing. But uh, I think that's going to end this one here, guys. Please like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you. And if you want to, go check out our Patreon. It's as low as a dollar a month, and you guys get early access to content. A link to that, as well as a link to our Instagram, Rumble, and merch store will be in the description below. But other than that, you guys take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one.